What's going on YouTube? Bear here. So Bear's Mix. Welcome to my channel. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Welcome back to my uh, little mini-series here, We the People. And happy birthday to America. Happy 246th birthday. Um, also known as happy Independence Day to those of us here in the States. And those of you back across the pond in England, it's known as Happy Insurrection Day, you bastards. Anyways, I'm starting my series off here today. I figured today's a perfect day to read to you the full text of the Declaration of Independence. This is something apparently is not being taught in school anymore. Uh, neither is the Bill of Rights or the U.S. Constitution or any other uh, founding principles or doctrines of this nation. And it's time to bring it back. And we're going to get into all this and a little bit more right after this brief introduction. All right, guys and gals, let's get right into it here. The Declaration of Independence signed July 4th, 1776. Although it was on July 2nd, 1776, the First Continental Congress voted unanimously to dissolve the connection between this country and Great Britain, declaring the United Colonies of North America to be free and independent states. In the first uh, Congress, I'm sorry, the first Continental Congress on 4th of July, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was signed and it reads as follows. The unanimous declaration of the 13 United States of America when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political binds which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's gods entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, that whenever any form of government becomes so destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute a new government, lying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as then shall seem most likely to affect their security and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed for light or transient causes, and accordingly, all experience hath shown that mankind are more dispelled to suffer all evers are sufferable, then the right themselves by abolishing the forms that which they are admonished. But when a long train of abuses and interceptations pursuing inevitable the same object invites a design to reduce them under absolute despotism, it is their right, it is their duty to throw such government and to provide new guards for their future security. Such has been the patent sufferance of the colonies, and such is now the necessity which constrains them to alter their former system of government. The history of the present King of Britain is a history of repeated injuries and interceptations, all having a direct objective having indirect objective the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states to power this, let facts submit to candid world. He has refused his assent to laws, the most wholesome and necessary for public good. He has forbidden his governors to pass laws of immediate and pressing importance unless suspended in their operation till his assent should be obtained, and when so suspended, he has utterly neglected to attend to them. He has refused to pass other laws 
for the accommodation of large districts of people. And those, those people would relinquish the right of representation in the legislation, a right inestimable to them and formable to tyrants only. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from the uh, excuse me. He has called together legislative bodies at places unusual, uncomfortable, and distant from their depository for the public records for the sole purpose of fatiguing them into compliance with his measures. Sorry guys, I needed to grab a drink. He has dissolved representative houses repeatedly for opposing with many firmness his invasions on the rights of the people. He has refused for a long time after such dissolutions to cause others to be elected whereby the legislative powers incapable of annihilation have returned to the people at large for their exercise. The state remained in the meantime exposed to all the dangers of invasion from without and convolutions within. He has endeavored to prevent the population of these states for the purpose of obstructing the laws and naturalization to foreigners, refusing to pass others to encourage their negotiations, hit here, and rising the conditions of a new appropriations of lands. He has obstructed the administration of justice by refusing his assent to laws for establishing judiciary powers. He has made judges dependent on his will alone for the tenure of their office and the amount and payment of their salaries. He has erected a multitude of new offices and sent hither sworn of officers to harass people and eat out their substance. He has kept among us in times of peace, standing armies without the consent of our legislatures. He has effective to render the military independent of the superior to the civil power. He has combined with others to subject us to a jurisdiction foreign to our constitution and unknowledged by our laws, giving his assent to their action of pretended legislature for ordering large bodies of armed troops among us, for protecting them by mock trial from punishment for any murder which they may commit on the inhabitants of these states, for cutting off our trade with all parts of the world, for imposing taxes on us without our consent, for depriving us in many cases the benefit of trial by jury, for transporting us beyond seas to be tried for pretend offenders, for abolishing the free system of English laws in a neighboring province, establishing therein an arbitrary government and enlarging its boundaries so as to render it once an example and fit instrument for introducing the same absolute rule into these colonies. For taking away our charters, abolishing our most valuable laws and altering fundamentally the forms of our governments for suspending our own legislatures and declaring themselves invested with powers to legislate for us in all cases whatsoever. He, is of the, he has abdicated government here by declaring us out of his protection and waging war against us. He has plundered our seas, ravaged our coasts, burnt our towns, and destroyed the lives of our people. He has, at this time, transporting large armies of foreign mercenaries to complete the works of death, desolation and tyranny already begun with circumstances of cruelty and preferably scarcely paralleled in the most barbarous ages and totally unworthy of the head of a civilized nation. He has constrained our fellow citizens taken captive on the high seas to bear arms against their country to become the executioners of their friends and brethren or to fall themselves by their hands. <clears throat> he has excited domestic insurrections among us. He has endeavored to bring us on the inhabitants of our frontiers, the merciless Indian savages, who know and rule of warfare is an undistinguished destruction of all ages, sexes, and conditions. 
and every stage of the oppressions, we have petitioned for redress in the most humble terms. Our repeated petitions have been answered only by repeated injury. A prince whose character is thus marked by every act which may be a tyrant is unfit to be the ruler of a free people. Nor have we been wanting in intentions to our British brethren. We have warned them from time to time of attempts by their legislature to extend an unwarrantable jurisdiction over us. We have reminded them of the circumstances of our um, immigration and settlements here. We have appealed to their native justice and magnanimity and have conjured them by the tides of our common kindred to disavow these usurpations, which would inevitably interrupt our connections and correspondence. They too have been deaf to the voice of justice and consiguity. We must therefore, at request and the necessity in which it renounces our separation and hold them as we hold the rest of mankind, enemies and war, peace and friends. We therefore, the representatives of the United States of America and General Congress assembled, appealing to the Supreme Judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions do, in the name and by authority of the God of the people of these colonies, solemnly publish and declare that these united colonies are and of right ought to be free and independent states that they are absolved from all allegiances to the British crown and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states, they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract allies, establish commerce and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do. And for the support of the declaration with the firm reliance on the protection of the divine provinces, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. For New Hampshire, signed by Joshua Bartlett, William Whipple, Matthew Thompson, uh, Thornton, correction. For Massachusetts, signed by John Hancock, Samuel Adams, John Adams, Robert Trait Payne, and Elbridge Gary. For Rhode Island, signed by Stephen Hopkins and Emily, uh, William Ellery. Connecticut signers are uh, Roger Sherman, Samuel Huntington, William Williams, Oliver Walton. For New York, the signers were William Floyd, Phillips Livington, Francis Lewis, and Lewis Morris. For New Jersey, the signers were Richard Stockton, John Witherspoon, Francis Hopkinson, John Hart, Abraham Clark. For Pennsylvania, the signers were Robert Morris, Benjamin Rush, Benjamin Franklin, John Morton, George Claymer, James Smith, George Taylor, James Wilson, and George Ross. For Delaware, signed by Caesar Rodney, George Reed, and Thomas McCain. For Maryland, Samuel Chase, William Packer, Thomas Stone, Charles Carroll of Carrollton. For Virginia, George Wythe, Richard Henry Lee, uh, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Harris, Thomas and Nelson Jr., Francis Lightfoot Lee, and Carter Braxton for North Carolina, William Hopper, Joseph Halls, and John Penn. For South Carolina, the signers were Edward Rutledge, Thomas Hayward Jr., Thomas Lynch Jr., and Arthur Middleton. And finally, for the state of Georgia, was Button Gwinnett, Lehman Hall, and George Walton. This, ladies and gentlemen, concludes our reading. Um, there are some things in there that you may be able to lend credence to what we are seeing today. Um, and things in here that are um, covered under our Bill of Rights. Uh, one big thing in here is for imposing taxes on us without our consent, uh, which is happening these days. Our own government is taxing the hell out of us. They tax our income, which is illegal. Um, 
the income tax was started to pay for World War II, or was World War One, or both of them, I forget. Uh, they tax, they're not supposed to tax their food, they're not supposed to tax their clothing, they tax that and it with sales tax. You buy property, you pay tax. You buy a vehicle, you pay tax. You register that vehicle, you pay tax. You renew your registration, you pay tax. Uh, and every, just about every state, except a couple, you pay state income tax and federal income tax. And even some places like Michigan and the city of Detroit, if you live or work in Detroit, you pay taxes to the city as well. So 47, almost 50% of your income goes out in taxes between state, federal, and local. Uh, when you buy something, you're taxed. When you die, you're taxed. Your funeral expenses are taxed. Everything is taxed. Uh, there's just so much going on. This document that I just read to you guys, the Declaration of Independence, is our divorce decree. That is us telling King George, pound sand, we want nothing to do with you anymore. We're our own nation, we're our own people. We will defend for and provide for ourselves. And for 246 years, we have done it quite successfully. All right, guys, in two weeks from today, on that would make it the 18th, uh, July 18th at noon, Alaska time, I will provide for you the United States Bill of Rights and its full text, the original 13, uh, I'm correct, the original 10 amendments to the Bill of Rights. that was later expanded through other additional amendments. And then on August 1st uh, at noon, uh, Alaska time, I will release a full reading of the Declaration of Independence. If I can fit the full text of the Declaration of Independence in the uh, description, I will include it in there so you guys can follow along. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Enjoy your holiday. Enjoy your time with your family, friends, and loved ones. Don't go blowing your fingers off. And as always, keep it between the ditches. Keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down. Go Army, beat Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem.